Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode six of Fargo, and this episode is called Buradan's Ass. And this, as all of the episode titles, actually is a parable. This one's not so much a parable, it's kind of a piss take, really. So there's this 14th century philosopher called John Buridan, and he's following this school called moral determinism which basically says um in any given circumstances a human being will pick like the optimal option they'll do the best thing for them for them, whatever um and in reaction to this um people made up this parable called um buridan's ass and so you place the donkey an equal distance between a bale of hay and water and it's said that the ass starved died of starvation and thirst because it couldn't make a choice about whether to deal with hunger or deal with thirst and there's like another version of it where it's just two equal sized bells of hay and the donkey starves uh, there's various different versions of it but the idea is it's to kind of like taking the piss out of Buridan's idea of saying you know ultimately people will make a decision people defending Buridan say hey you know people commit suicide you know people do die um rather than face decisions that they can't compute so you know maybe lay off the um ass analogies to, to some degree but i quite like reading about it apparently other people had spoken about it before so buridan's getting basically the shit for ideas that were discussed by aristotle and also abu hadim um Hazali. Absolutely fascinating. I was wetting myself laughing reading about this stuff, but basically these philosophers taking the piss out of each other with metaphors and analogies. But the point is that this episode is called Buridan's Ass. And so it feels like someone is going to end up dying rather than making a decision. I fucking hope it's Lester. Oh, my sweet summer child. I really do. I feel like Lester's kind of bale of hay is hospital treatment for his hand and the water is getting away with his crime. And he's he's struggling to make a decision, so he's just doing nothing. But actually, he's still making a decision by doing nothing because his infection is killing him. He's now ended up in a hospital. They've got the, I think, a bit of cloth. They said, so they know they know how the wound was created. They've got a bit of cloth that was on the bullet, the shotgun pellet that, was, that they've extracted from his hand. That cloth is, we know for a fact, because that amazing scene, that that's come from Vern Thurman. So it is go, it is go time. And we had a really like, it was like a non-showdown showdown with um, with Molly and Lester last episode where he was kind of pretending to be asleep and she was, you know, she was looking in and he was opening his eyes and we were like, oh. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Lord Malvo just came very close to being on my shit list. Well, no, he was on my shit list last episode for anti-Semitism against the Jewish neighbour. So he's on my shit list anyway. But he would have been on perhaps an even worse shit list if he'd have killed the Jewish neighbour. Um, but also, like, Officer Brimley now, he knows where he lives. You know, Malvo knows where he lives. He knows his daughter. He's threatening his neighbour. It looks like he's on a clean-up operation. I don't want them to die. If if I've got to choose between them and Lord Malvo, sorry, Lauren, you're the aggressor. So that that was the last episode. This episode, episode six, is Buridan's ass. We know what the metaphor is. So can we just have this one, please, line up neatly, neatly, with the story, please. But yeah, it's really nice to be back from Christmas. Happy New Year, everyone. Let's have at it. We've started. This is a true story. This fish. I'd forgotten to say about the guys from Fargo now 
know about Lord Malvo because of Lester, so he's it's gonna go down. I love how it always says it's a true story and we know it clearly is not. Make me hungry. The last half of that. Who's <laughs> this lobster munching? <laughs> Someone's dying. Sam Hess. Assets deployed, Mr. Wrench and Mr. Numbers. Three days plus lodging plus mileage. Mr. Wrench and Mr. Numbers. So, uh, now they're en route to a second location to apprehend who we uh, think is responsible. Pools. I'm not 100% certain, but that guy's Australian accent is shaky. Shaky. We're gonna have to look him up afterwards. Play. Dead. What's that? Kill and be killed. Head in a bag. There's the message. Of course, boss. Yeah. 1900 years shipped by rail. Uh! 600 per plus customs plus extra. Welcome, ladies, to Turkish delight. Your wish is our command. Time to make the call. What, what about the, the voice thingy there? Oh. Stop screwing around. <laughs> He's such a dickhead. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. He was born in a field and raised in the woods. And he had nothing. Why was he so hungry? And they fed. It should be me, he said. And out of the darkness, the wolves came, whispering. You understand what I'm saying? On a scale from one to ten, my friend, you're fucked. Saying. I love these two. So the neighbor, Jewish fella, he, he gives the guy a warning, you know, a, a kind of move along. Said the fellow was real menacing in return. Had a police scanner, he said. Talked about how maybe he was gonna come back and kill the neighbor and his family. Oh, jeez. Would you call it in? Well, see, I, I don't think they'd believe me is the thing. Grimly! He get a plate number, your neighbor? Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, I called it in. SUV of some type, company car. Which company? The grocery chain, you know, July and January. Phoenix Farms. Right. Which, this Malvo fella is saying he's a pastor. Wait. So, not sure of the connection there. Well, maybe we should drive over, see what they say. Yeah, let me get changed. It's all coming together. Oh, Molly Grimly sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. Morning, Mr. Uh, Creech. Uh, and how are we feeling there, Mr. Nygaard? Oh, yeah. Real good. Ready to go home. 
Well, now that's up to him, I suppose. Uh, what, what's with, uh, why is there a police officer outside? Not for me to say, is it? <laughs> okay, Mr. Creech, I'll be back to take you to radiology in 10 minutes. <laughs> Oh, don't tell me he's going to take Mr. Creature's bandages and I'm... Um... That cop, the female, says you're a suspect. Suspect of what? Murder? <sighs> for, for Pearl, the chief? Even Sam S. That is crazy. That is what that is. I'm the victim. Me. He came to my house. They. I almost died. Did you tell her that? Don't lie to me. What are you mixed up in, Lester? What the heck is going on? Jazz, I swear to you, th this is all just a... Heck, you're my brother. You should be on my side. Jazz, I swear to God, I did not do this. Anything. Well, they think you did. Or know who did, so... So you gotta give them something. Someone. If you want this to go away, you gotta give them someone. You've been a burden my whole life. I'm done. Ah. There's something wrong with you, Lester. There's, there's something missing. You're not right in the world. Jazz. Woo! Jazz. Yes! And Chaz is a dick as well, but... Oh, just... This guy. Gutted. Gutted. Oh, don't, Lester. Wait. Wait. Pulse. I just have a wish. I don't think this is going to happen because it would be quite convoluted. But I want him to switch bodies. Like, he tries to become Mr. Creature, Screech, or whatever his name is. But then, like, that guy's getting his dick amputated or something. <laughs> Just choke yourself, you piece of crap. Um. He is such an asshole. Damn it. He's just gonna nick someone's car now? Welcome to Phoenix Farms. Hiya. You're police officers. <laughs> you sure are. Is it about the bugs? Mm -hmm. Dave, are we telling people about the bugs? <sighs> okay then. Uh, I'm gonna leave my card. Deputy Solverson. Guys, I could not live in Minnesota. Seriously. I like a bit of snow every now and then, but that great drives me mad. Why is anyone out in this? You were warned by the radio lady. What? Did you make the drop? No. Not too late to get off the pot. A lot of damn money. Not about the money. It's bigger than the... Thank you, God. I know what I gotta do now. Give me an hour and head back. I know what I have to do now. I didn't before. Well, sir, I gotta... It's two dollars for the first 30 minutes, so... Son, you go to church? Yes, sir. Get open the goddamn gate. Your Lord demands it. This guy is the worst Christian ever. When a dog goes rabid, right, there's no mistaking it for a normal dog. And here we are, we're supposed to be, you know, us people, we're supposed to know better, to be better. 
you know? Must be hard to live in this world if you believe that. You have no idea. He's so sweet. You're not sweet. You're a bit of a twat. <laughs> Holy shit! Thought about it, the 60-40 thing doesn't work for me. So he's gonna set him up to have done it, but he'll die in the process, the PT man, yeah? In case uh, Stavros does call the cops, we want to make sure they're too busy to respond. That's part one. Part two is, have you ever had Turkish delight? It's disgusting. That's okay. I'd be insulted if you didn't try. This is nuts. Fuck it. Fuck it. Chaz? He is implicating Chaz. He's gonna that's why he's got the foot in the pants. Gotta be kidding me. Oh my god, I hate Chaz, but this is unjust. You're gonna do your brother like that? You're gonna do your nappy like that?